Uh, as I said, at 6 yesterday, they were given a prompt that at 7 o'clock, each of the writers received a new plot point that they had to include. And then at 8 o'clock, the writers had to check in because they had to start working on their play. And, you know, most writers are, are the one part of theater that work in isolation. Every, in other, every other way, it's a collaborative art. Usually they have a lot more time than this. Uh, but so far, so good with, uh, with the product they put together. And then great job, everybody, on putting together that production in such a short time. Our second show is a mystery. So that's the genre this time. Our writer is Gabe Reese. And uh, Gabe filled in. Uh, at, 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 we were supposed to have a different writer. At 4 o'clock this morning is when this play began. But in a 24-hour play festival, exciting things like that are going to happen. Uh, the director of this show is Heather Slawney. Yeah. Now, the, the prompt for this play is that the characters must be on different levels at all times. Uh, the stage manager for this one is Amanda Blanco. The actors are Jack Daly, Cleve Gestrick, and Madeline Mosa. And uh, this play is called Nuts. Yes! Yeah. 
Robert, I don't think you realize what just happened. I believe that you just thought that you were back in the war there for a second. What? I did? <laughs> oh, God, what's wrong with me? <laughs> Based on the way you're acting, I, I believe that you may be showing symptoms or signs of insanity. This is going perfectly. That's exactly how I planned. I suppose I should explain myself. My name is Dr. Judith Mason. When I was a child, I, all I wanted to do was be wealthy. I grew up poor, and when I saw the other kids playing with their jump ropes and their candy bars and their yo-yos, and you get the idea, I, I was infuriated. I, I would ask my parents, Mom, can I get a Ouija board just like Sarah has? <laughs> and my mom would reply, No, honey, you need to choose between a Ouija board or food for the week. Pick one. And I would always choose the Ouija board, <laughs> but I would end up hungry. That, right there, right then, I vowed that somehow, some way, one day I would make millions of dollars. And so I went to medical school. I became a doctor. And it wasn't enough. It isn't enough. So here I am. I'm a doctor. Some might call me successful. I live in a beautiful apartment in New York City where you can see the river when the sky is clear. And yet, I wanted more. I needed more. So I devised a plan. A psychological experiment. Could I, a doctor, single-handedly make somebody go insane? I mean, I am so close. And why, Robert? Well, he was one of my patients, and he just seemed so, so malleable. Like I could bend his every will. And I was slightly falling in love with him. <laughs> and if I could do it, if I could send him to the asylum, then that's it. I wouldn't have to worry about hiding my feelings anymore, because he would be out of the picture. I would be home free. I'm rich. I'm insane. Me. I suppose I should explain myself. <laughs> My name is Robert. Robert Nard. When I was a child, all I wanted was to not have to do any work ever. <laughs> I sat in first grade and I watched my classmates try to solve tedious and pointless mathematical problems. I, meanwhile, I drew rocket ships and space guns on my desk. I was clearly much happier than the rest of them were. It infuriated them. They were so jealous of me. I would go to my mother, I would say, Mom, why do any of these other losers do their homework? And she would say, for no goddamn reason. Now shut up! I'm trying to watch TV. And I would say, Mom, why don't you get a real job? And she would say, because your father left us enough money to get by before he left. Now do the dishes. I did. <laughs> and I hated it. I made a vow then and there that I would never, ever, under any circumstances, do any work for any reason ever again. So I devised a plan. I thought that the only way to be able to accomplish that would be to get myself admitted into a psych ward. That way, I could just relax and pretend to be crazy while I am served meals paid for by the expense of the state. <laughs> oh, those idiots. So here I am. But why, Dr. Mason? Well, because. <laughs> oh. I thought, hey, she already knows me. 
this woman has inspected my balls. <laughs> if I went crazy, she would be the first one to notice. And plus, she's a little bit in love with me. So you know that kind of happens. <laughs> oh, and I am so close. She almost seems eager to get me in. But I gotta wait it out. I can't give in because if I do, then I won't seem like I'm crazy. But man, if I can pull this off, then that's it. That's the high life. I'm free. I'm metaphorically rich. I'm homeward bound. I'm. Ah! See, um, this is kind of clever because she's not only tempted, but also, uh, makes me seem crazy. <laughs> Can we come to a compromise, huh? 
I go if you go if you don't go. <laughs> no? Okay, well, uh, what, what if we just uh, stand by the door? Uh, we'll throw a fit, and maybe they will let some of us in. <laughs>